Glad you stopped by. It's sort of gray, it's sort of cold today. Well, chilly at least. It's a great day to work in the kitchen and to just savor the harvest of summer. You've probably, hopefully you've seen um, the, the segment we did on drying tomatoes. And I promised that I'd get back to you on, so then what do you do after they're dry? So these tomatoes uh, have their color, they're, they're a little bit leathery, they've got some wonderful scent. And I have kept the red ones together. Let me show you. They're not always red. These are a little darker. Um, and it's not because they were different, a different variety tomato, even though I work with a lot of varieties. The reason these are dark, I have dried all of my tomatoes outside, and there were a few days that were just so hot they got overdone. So they're not burned. They're just dark. The flavor is still wonderful, but I wanted to keep the dark ones separate because... What I want to do with the red ones, um, they just need to be red. And, and for, for my picky part, they need to be red. Now, these are leathery, and I want little pieces. So this is what I'm going to do. And the idea came from Karen Cox of Simply um, Just Tomatoes. This book is about 20 years old, I'm realizing. And I've been very influenced by this woman in her cookbook. I put the tomato pieces into a plastic bag and put them in the freezer for about 15 minutes. Now, you can hear this. I think you can hear this. Sounds like broken glass. And actually, it's they are just almost that, um, that brittle. So you can use something like a rolling pin to work them over a bit and break them up. I want little pieces for, to go into salads, to go into casseroles, to sprinkle them, to stir fries. And for, for my part, something like this is just a little too big. It's still very chewy, even though <clears throat> we're going to plump them up a little bit and reconstitute them some. I want little bits. So at this point, since I have sun-dried these, I would put these into a colander and rinse them just a little bit. Now, I washed my tomatoes before I set them out to make sure that really big, awful things were not on them. But they sat out in the dust, and um, I don't want to dust my lovely tomatoes. So I rinsed them off a bit in this colander. Cold water, not hot water. We're going to apply a little bit of heat in a few minutes, but not yet. That was just to get them a little bit clean. While you weren't looking, I toasted some garlic in olive oil, fresh garlic in olive oil. I am going to add these cleaned tomato chunks, toss them around so that every little piece of tomato gets coated with this wonderful garlic oil. Now, here's a key that I think is really important. If you're going to, if you're going to uh, store your tomatoes this way, which I recommend and it seems to be very popular, you'll want to make sure that your garlic is cooked. You do not want to burn it, but, but cook it in the oil, roast it in the oil, sizzle it in the, in the oil until it just, just starts to lose its white look. Not quite brown, but it's certainly not white yet. Look at this lovely stuff. Now, what we're going to do is add a cup of water to this, put it back on the stove, add the cup of water, bring it to a boil for about 30 seconds, maybe. And um, that's it. Then we're going to pack it in an apothecary jar and keep it in the refrigerator. So, um, punch pause, and I'll show you the rest of it in just a minute. I don't want you to think I'm fooling you on this. I added a few more of these tomato bits when I went to the stove. So when I tell you that I added water to plump these up, I want you to know that they don't plump that much. I, I put in about, um, I, again, as many as I put in the first time. So here we have a skillet full. You can see there's a bit of oil in the bottom, a little tiny bit of liquid. Um, I stirred it all up really well to make sure that all of the tomato is, is getting marinated with that wonderful garlic oil. Now, this will store really well in the refrigerator for weeks. 
if it lasts that long. You don't have to worry about it. just keep it refrigerated. Pack it in something that's got a, a good fitting lid. And this is ready. This is this is like the tomatoes packed in oil that you buy on a specialty shelf. It's just a lot less expensive by far, by far. And it's it's more delicious as far as I'm concerned. I haven't found any any all of all of soap to dry tomatoes that are as good as what I've been able to do in my own kitchen. I'm going to pack this down so it all fits. Now it will keep well. Um, stay tuned because I'm going to be using a number of recipes with this through the winter. This is just the most wonderful way. I think it's the best way of preserving a tomato crop. I think I mentioned that before. You can tell I'm convinced. Now, I am going to be putting bags of dried tomatoes in the freezer. One reason why I do this in the freezer rather than just leaving them in glass jars with lids, you never know how much moisture, if there's any moisture left in these or how much. And you could end up with a little bit of mold developing and I don't want to risk losing any of these precious tomatoes. I've tried leaving them out in, in the room, kind of in the open air, in a basket with a cloth over them, but there are little moths that just love to come and nest in those, so that hasn't been a good answer either. So I'm going to put those in the freezer. I'm going to put this in my refrigerator. When this jar is empty, I'll be repeating this process. And as you can see, it's not a big deal. It doesn't take much time, and it's just great to have something like this to pull out of the refrigerator and spoon into into um, salads and sauces and salad dressings and all, all kinds of things. But that's for another segment, and thanks for coming by, and come back soon, okay?